Yep. So hello everybody, my name is Craig Lee, I'm the uh, Chief Architect of Blue Bedora. Um, we're going to dive in, and this is kind of the fun part, where you take a lot of this data and actually show it solving some problems and being, being functional. So what we're looking at here is the left-hand side, you see what you really get out of the box when you realize operations, right? You see the host system, as you click through, you see the relationships change, these virtual machines running on that host, and then ultimately down to the data store. Great. So what comes out of the box of you realize operations standard, it's pretty useful. But I'm going to really show you what Bloomadora adds and kind of show you what you're missing with just this. So this is with Bloomadora for this, uh, this is in our example, we're talking about pivotal ready architecture. So uh, PCF, uh, Kubernetes, uh, EMC clusters, things like that, where we can actually pull in the hardware information from the uh, VxRail cluster itself. As I'm clicking through, you can see the, the rack server related to the power supply. And then also, we're adding in relationships because of the dimensional data, as Mike had mentioned, down to the host system and down to these virtual machines. But also with that, we really want to look at the application workload side, right? So I can see as I'm clicking through here, there's a Diego cell in PCF. And uh, you know, ignore the fact that it says Diego cell. This could be your SQL Server or HANO or anything else we're monitoring. But as I'm clicking through, you see the relationships change to what virtual machine it's related on. right? So we're linking back to that virtual layer itself. Same thing with the, uh, the PCF boss jobs and Doppler server and Go router. And as you can see, as I'm clicking through here, there's a lot of different layers. And really what this is, it's the, the realization of all that dimensional data and the metadata around relationships and also understanding our, our, our uh, target's architecture too as we're going through this and really integrating in, in with our products. We also have uh, Kubernetes here. As you saw, a lot of announcements at VMworld uh, around PKS. And we want to uh, definitely address that. So we have uh, Kubernetes that makes relationships through and vSAN and all the way down. So this is what you get on the, the right-hand side with just a few of our offerings in a select stack. And on the left side is really kind of what you get out of the box. So now I'm going to take it through and actually show that in action, what it really means to our customers. So first, uh, starting off with our, our, our pivotal example, PCF example, you have two different uh, availability zones, two different clouds side by side. On the left-hand side, you have PCF running on AWS. And you can see the relationship between the foundation, the availability zone, the jobs, right? So this is, these are the actual application workloads running on the AWS side. And we relate that back to Amazon Web Services EC2 instance, right? There's a lot of alerts here. Perhaps we want to do some investigation. Uh, but with that visibility, you're able to really see that. And just for, for I know most folks here are, are VMware experts, and they understand this already. But um, to clarify, you know, out of the box, VMware is doing the, the this piece that you see here, the virtual machine, the SXI host, the data stores, are all things that, that uh, uh, vRealize Operations is monitoring on their own. Everything else that you see there is our integrations that we've added. So we're adding the integrations for PCF, for Dell, for you know, uh, AWS. Um, all of those have been added in, and they look native, right? We're using their uh, APIs um, you know, to, to keep a really consistent look and feel for throughout the product. Um, but those have all been added by Bloomadora. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything stopping the management packs from pushing events into Log Insight, or do you just look to VR Ops to do that? Uh, at least with the management pack uh, structure today within the VR Ops platform, it's almost going the other way where, the, where VMware's designed it so that the Log Insight events come into the objects, into VRealize operations, and this is the central aggregation point. But that's an excellent segue into what I'm going to show around alerting, <laughs> which is actually this, this next piece here. So we're looking at the VxRail cluster itself, and we can look at the health of all the different aspects of you know, cooling units, power supplies, things like that. And you guys saw the relationships earlier, so I won't uh, really dive in too much in depth, but you can see the blade servers we're monitoring and the relate to the VMware health systems and so on. But where this gets really interesting is because we have the relationships and also talking about your topic around alerts, is now we have alerts that we're also pulling, you know, not just metrics, but also relationships and the alerts themselves. So now we're looking at a PCF Diego brain. So we're looking at the app layer and alert coming from a particular service within PCF itself. Because of the relationships, we can see what the real impact is, where the real issues are. That's, that's the ultimate understanding we're trying to go, go with here. So this is an alert that is coming out of PCF. And we can see that the uh, Diego brain, which is a service, uh, has a, a critical failure. And uh, as Mike had mentioned, we have uh, several partnerships, um, and we try to have best practices and great relationships with those we collect data from. And from within PCF, we actually use their best practices uh, to write these recommendations. Right? So we're actually giving here some action items on how to actually follow up on this particular alert. 
but I was able to trace this through from the VXROM hardware layer because the relationships down to the app side, down to this particular layer. Cool. Hopefully that gives you a bit of context on the, the log insight side. It does, yeah. Good, thank you. So that means we don't always blame the network. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, uh, yeah, they still blame yeah. the network, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they try to, yeah. Sometimes it's the storage and whatnot, but when you have a tool like this, you can really find where the real issue is, right? But, and, and, but I mean, that gets to a great point, right? A lot of customers that are buying Luminar are trying to reduce finger pointing. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of the ways that you do that. So get everyone, one, you have a single uh, source of truth. Uh, actually, excellent segue into our first painted glass view. So this is how to um, really troubleshoot quickly. So we're looking at a Microsoft SQL environment. It's a cluster. Uh, we can see some several KPIs there, and we'll dive into that in a minute. But as I'm clicking through these, you see the relationship through the stack. So it's a traditional architecture. We have SQL, IES running on VMs, ESX host, we're monitoring the actual PowerEdge server, the networking layer with the Cisco switch itself, and then data store, and then onto the actual SAN, right? In our instance, it's a uh, pure array. But what's really cool about this stuff is the Blumador integrations, they're not only uh, very high level and, and relational, we're not only pulling in metrics, but we're also going deep. So I'm gonna look at this particular uh, SQL server with very high wait time. I want to explore further, so I navigate to the Microsoft SQL Server Query Plan, and from this, I can look at several SQL queries. Um, and then this is actually highlighting our highest utilized SQL server. We can go to the query by the highest average execution time, get some info on that, and then we ultimately are pulling the actual text of that, that particular query. So already, this is a pretty good level, right? You can have conversations between your DBA team, perhaps storage, and the virtualization admin team to really find and pinpoint where that workload's coming from. But and it's rare to see that with yeah. any tool other than a, you know, a sp specific DBA tool for monitoring databases. So to have this mm -hmm. right alongside everything else is pretty, um, pretty interesting. Definitely. But what we do is we go even further, and as Mike had mentioned about um, doing off particular jobs for getting even uh, further level of data and further level of analysis, we have our SQL query plan. So now we're looking at the individual functions within that query. And it's a bit hard to read, but this hash match is taking up 62% uh, of the operator cost. So this particular function within the query is putting the load all the way through the virtualization environment. Right? We're able to trace it down to that level. So well, this is starting to look like actual application tracing. Can you maybe explain the difference between you know, actual tracing and what you do here? Right. Well, if, you're, if you say tracing, you mean by transaction tracking? Yeah. Um, that's not really what we're doing here from a, uh, usually transaction tracking has artificial instrumentation, um, things along that side. What we're doing is we're gathering a wide variety of metrics, getting all the relational uh, information, making those relationships with metadata and just pulling it together. What I think of, sometimes the way I've described it is we start where application tracing ends. So in the application trace, you can, you're instrumenting your, your app you can see usually where it hits the database, but then that's it. So we pick up and you see, all right, here's where you, where you hit the database, and now let's look at everything else inside of your environment. Yep. Sounds good. So I know time's running real short. I have one last thing to show you guys. As I'm tracing this through, the other piece is, now we went deep on the application side and went into the query. Let's look at the impact on the infrastructure. Perhaps that's what's causing it or, or that's a cascading effect. So as I go through here, I can see there's a high average wait time on the VM very high latency, high latency on the host because we're making that relationship. The, uh, the hardware itself looks fine and the network uh, area looks, looks, looks okay. There's no KPI alerts there. But from the data store side, right, we have high total latency as we're going through. But then, because we're taking out of what's in VROPS itself and making relationships, we're looking at the underlying SAN volume itself and there's a lot going on here, a lot of alerts around I.O. and latency. And using that same methodology of, of linking the, the dashboards and objects within VROPS, we can go to our dashboard called Troubleshoot A Pure Array. And, and again, this happens to be pure within this environment, but it may be NetApp, EMC, or any you know, uh, tens of other uh, targets, especially around storage, where we can go step by step and really looking at this, this uh, particular array, looking at if the latency is high. We offer recommendations kind of on what to do there. We're looking at the latency overall. And this is an example of uh, what Mike had mentioned. We're really trying to supercharge all the different monitoring platforms that we hook up to. We're actually powering the analytics engine to do forecasting analysis on the numbers that we're bringing in. Following this through, we also see the distribution of latency, so the amount of time it, it's spent with the latency itself. We'll look at is the current I.O. high, and then uh, ultimately down to the actual queue depth, where these are basically uh, jobs that, that are, are, are not being serviced by the storage array itself. 